acting position, that's who she's invoking. She's invoking that heavenly goddess, but it's spirit. And the Egyptians turned this into the hieroglyph for the Ka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Ka is the spirit. spirit. Yeah. And the Greeks turned this image into the symbol of the Psi, the a letter of the alphabet that means spirit. Mm -hmm. Our word psychology mm -hmm. and psychic mm -hmm. all come from that. Mm -hmm. So, so um, from the Neolithic, but we still keep, you know, I mean, this is pre-Columbian. And so we still, you know, when a culture hits the particular level, it doesn't matter where it is in the world, they still have the same imagery. Uh -huh. These all amazing uh, yoni images that begin in the Paleolithic and they keep going through and in, into the Neolithic. Although in the Neolithic you begin to see more like big fat mama seated goddesses mm -hmm. that are the enthroned mother and then the maidens that are... This one I'll pass around. Here we go. It's charged. This is from Bronze Age. Just one second. Um, this is more Bronze Age. And uh, unfortunately, one of her snakes snapped off just as I was taking her out. I'll Aww. put her back. Well, I did do Broken Goddesses last night, didn't I? <laughs> so we'll just uh, find her snake and put it back. We have a fairy hospital and a goddess hospital here. So, <laughs> so I'll pass her around. This is um, that same birth, and or not birth, but... Um, She's like the death and daughter maiden energy, mm. the, the lover. She's the, we, uh, that's also the dangerous lover, you know. <laughs> and uh, she's from Crete. She's Bronze Age. Bronze Age is what years? Uh, well, at different places, different times. Um, it would be from probably around... Let's see, Copper Age is usually thought to be about nine or 10,000. The, 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 the Bronze Age is generally considered in Europe and Mediterranean right, yeah. area to have been from about um, 4,000 to 1,500. Yeah, I think so. it pushes back and, a little. And yeah. then before that was the Copper Age. Right. And before the Copper Age was the Neolithic. So but the, the Bronze Age in other places, like the New World, right. um, lasted right up until the conquest. Right. You know. Exactly. So, so, uh, and I think it really kind of pushes, so I'm talking Copper and Bronze Age yeah. here, which is really from around uh, 9,000. Uh, they, they were just beginning to get Copper to be able to chip away some of these incredible uh, places uh, like uh, uh, Godep, um, Godeply, Godeply Techie, right. right, which is the huge... Uh, temple that they found in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yes, okay. Sorry, what was her name again? I'm sorry. Uh, she, nobody knows. Oh, okay. The answer is nobody knows. Okay. And yeah. your question? Well, mine was, uh, you know, because we, we see all these re resembling patterns that happen right. around it. Is there any evidence of any type of tribal inter yeah, tribal interactions between other shamans? Like one shaman from one region maybe possibly infecting other regions with their ideas. Well, there's, that's, um, um, there's no hard and fast evidence. We do know that there are uh, a lot of that happened. If you look into Europe, you'll see that there are um, a lot of similarities in the Paleolithic art in terms of the shapes of those goddesses tended to be very similar. You know, whereas if you go to slightly different cultures later, you find, uh, uh, but you find the same kind of images in Africa, and you find the same kind of images in Europe. I think there was a meme mm. in which we were <coughs> psychically connected mm. from that period, and that, and that it was worldwide because it was shaped around the bodies of mm. the people. Mm. It was central to us mm. and what we look like. So there might be a, a, a little taller and thinner looking goddesses, you know, yoni goddesses yeah. in one culture and they'd be like a little more plump and round in another one or, or maybe one would be carrying a loaf of bread on her head and another one would be not, you know. It would be, um, some would have the yoni exposed and some would be, you know, just be standing in place with the, with the vulva being a big triangle. 
there's just a lot of different forms that go around. Mm -hmm. uh, we do know that there were traveling artists all the way back to the uh, Paleolithic. We've been able to track the art, but that's a portrait artist, the mm -hmm. person, uh, whoever it was, uh, traveled around and did little ivory portrait heads of important people in that region. And they found like three or four of them. And one of them is of the oldest woman shaman uh, who had a crooked face mm -hmm. and lived in a, uh, uh, in a village that was made out of ma mammoth bones. Oh. And uh, she dates from around 26,000 BC and her, we call her Crooked Fox because her face was crooked and when they found her body, her skull was deformed and she was in a really uh, uh, an honor, uh, a burial of honor. Hmm. And um, she, uh, she made these goddess, fertility goddess images and also hunting charms for the men and she worked special kinds of magic. And all. So there's like one image of her and then there's another image someplace else that they found that's a man's head that was a leader or, or who knows what, a shaman perhaps. There, unfortunately, his was found a lot, just not, you know, with a lot of stuff. Hers was found in situ, oh. and so in her hut, along with all of her stuff. So we kind of know that the, the first occupation, the first known individual, was this woman who was a shaman. And that, that was probably who the most important person in villages were, were the shamans. Mm -hmm. But there were probably other people who, like a man's leader of the hunt and a woman's leader of the birthing or the, or the, or the gather, you know, there'd be a woman that specialized in herbs and stuff like that, and then there'd be the older woman who was the midwife and the whatever. Right. So what do you think of getting of another that, tray in these smaller pieces? I could just put them back. Oh, uh, I'll just uh, okay. I'll, I'll put them back because some of them are fragile enough that they... I'd like to, I'd like to yeah. say something also to help address mm -hmm. that. During the earliest times, people were migratory. Right. So they followed the, the herds of the caribou. They followed the herds of the mammoths. They followed right. whatever the herds were, the cattle of North Africa. And we find trade goods <coughs> like seashells and um, and particular types of flint and obsidian and things like that that we can trace because we know the origins of where these things come from. We find them thousands upon thousands of miles from the origin point along trade routes. So we know that people were traveling and trading and some people no doubt made a special way of their life of simply being travelers to go from place to place and bringing, you know, stuff to trade off. Right. You know? And um, that was long before people got into being able to do warfare or anything, you know, because you couldn't really handle that when you were, but if people could be out there with a basket of uh, interesting seashells or flints or, and no doubt the same thing for these goddesses because we find the basic form of the Paleolithic goddess figure, the pose, the structure, the design, everything about it, from Spain to Siberia, you know, during the Ice Age. So However, one Siberia. thing we know for sure is that they were probably made by women because you get this foreshortened effect. Because mm -hmm. the women, when they were pregnant, were looking down at themselves mm -hmm. and making them out of clay. Mm -hmm. nice. So they, that's why they all look have this odd kind of shape mm -hmm. that they're made foreshortened because that's what you see when you're looking down and trying to sculpt yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's like, now they finally come up with this and they're finally mm -hmm. agreeing. It's like one of those things that most of us have known for a long time, but mm -hmm. it takes ages before things get accepted, even marginally in the archeological community, because it's really unfortunately a real male-dominated field and has been since like the Victorians uh, and before, you know, uh, people started digging around and they they wouldn't even let women into the uh, uh, schools, you know? <laughs> so now um, since Maria Gambudis has kind of torn the lid off a lot of stuff. Uh, she is the, uh, as Alexander Marshak, he is the uh, Neolithic, or, or rather Paleolithic, Stone Age writer, the <laughs> writer that you want for the Neolithic, uh, the age of domestication of animals and plants and all. The person you want to read is, uh, is uh, Maria, and that's spelled M-A-R-J-A, M-A-R-I-J-A, Maria Gimbutas. G I M B U T U S. G I A. G I M. 
M B U B U T T S A S A S. Can you pass the cheese? Oh, I was just going to ask. Could you make me a cracker first? Erin, can you make me a cracker? Yes. What do you want? Both cheese and salami.